10,000 subbies. I can't even count that high. That is crazy. I mean, I did it on purpose, but it wouldn't have happened without all of your love, your support, and your positive comments. You guys seem to like my tech videos, so today I thought I'd talk about why I'm single. Now, it could be a bunch of different reasons, but before you tell me what you think, hear me out, okay? I hypothesize that it's because I am a software engineer and software engineers suck at dating. Have you ever played Tetris? This game, Falling Blocks, you've seen it before. In the year 2000, Professor Robert Stickold at Harvard ran an experiment where he paid students to play Tetris for hours at a time over a few days. And turns out, most of the students reported seeing these Tetris blocks falling in their dreams and in their daily lives after the experiment ended. They would see boxes on shelves or cars on the street and feel the urge to arrange them into neat rows. And this is known as the Tetris effect. When you repeat a pattern of thinking, your brain reinforces certain neural pathways and makes them more efficient. That's why you think about things less as you practice them. But the problem is, you can't turn off specific pathways. When you think a certain way in one part of your life, it leaks over into other parts of your life. That's why lawyers try to find flaws in everything you say, business students will always be condescending, and software engineers take things that are ambiguous and subjective and squash them into numbers and algorithms. There's no room for wishy-washy feelings when it comes to computers. Computers need well-defined rules for every single problem that they need to solve. If this happens, do this, otherwise do this. And as you can imagine, this doesn't really work well in dating. Because of this, software engineers will refuse to argue with you because they already have rules for everything. And that's no fun because arguments are 95% of the interactions in relationships. I know there's value in talking things out and seeing how both sides feel, but it's kind of pointless because babe, the code has already been written and it runs in constant time as it goddamn should. But really, how can you blame us? Software engineers are trained to be metrics driven. If something can't be measured by a number, then it can't be improved and is therefore kind of useless. User sentiment, impact, business value, these can all be reduced to numbers. But in dating, no one wants to be measured by a number. I don't think you should try to objectify people. I really don't like the 10 scale that a lot of guys use. People are multidimensional. There are very different things I might appreciate about Becky, Brittany, Tammy, and Chad. It's actually a bunch of different numbers, and you could probably assign weights to each of them depending on your priorities at a given time, and then evaluate a heuristic for each person, which unfortunately, yeah, it's a number. And this kind of ruins dating because the whole point is to embrace ambiguity, to lean into the unknown and just appreciate each moment individually for what it is. But realistically, there's a finite number of people that you'll be willing to date before you should just settle on someone. We can call that N, and all of your N partners are randomly distributed, so you don't know when you'll find the one. And that's kind of the whole point of dating. It's just asking these questions. Is this person the perfect match for me, or did I already pass up on the one? What am I missing out on if I commit right now? When do I commit? It's 37%. Because this is actually an optimal stopping problem, and the solution involves picking a cutoff value, which we'll call R, such that you reject the first R candidates and then commit to the next person that's the best one that you've seen so far. So for any arbitrary cutoff value, the probability that you end up with the global optimum can be represented by this formula, and at the limit, this converges to 1 over E, which is 37%. So all you gotta do is estimate the total number of people you'll probably date in your lifetime, and then date the first 37% of them without committing to anyone, just to gauge your standards. And then afterwards, once you meet someone who's better than everyone else you've seen so far, you lock it down. The probability that you end up with the perfect match is also 37%. And that doesn't sound that great, but mathematically, unless you can predict the future, that's the best that you can do given the constraints. And that's probably worth it. Like you experience, you learn, and you grow so much in the process, but it's kind of scary. And it sounds like a lot of effort, time, and patience, maybe even heartbreak. I don't like that. And instead, I could just hunch over a computer until I look like the jackals from Halo. Maybe I shouldn't even bother.